by Abdul Karim from Mumbai, India. I was very sad to read the news that Ofcom, the regulatory authorities in UK, have imposed a fine of 300,000 pounds on Peace TV. What did you say that they put such a huge fine? And that's a very good question. And as I said that we don't have to believe everything what the media says. And I've read these articles that have come in UK, it has come in India, it has come in Malaysia, that 300,000 pounds have been fined on the channels by Dr. Zakir Naik and my photo is there. And you know, and all the news that I read, it gave impression that Dr. Zakir Naik said something on the channel for which the fine has been put. <laughs> Let me clarify to you that this fine has not been put because of my speeches. Yes, Peace TV, Alhamdulillah, I'm the founder. And these fines were put on two statements. One made on the Peace TV Urdu in UK and the other is on Peace TV English. And though the though the news news media especially in india oh see dr zakir naik now it is proved he's promoting terrorism he's giving hate speech and for his hate speech he was fined 300000 pounds all this is their own addition these fines were not put because of my speeches it was because of an urdu speaker and his uh, name is sheikh ashfaq salfi and mashallah he's a very knowledgeable person he in in his talk he mentioned the punishment for people involved with black magic. And black magic is considered as the third major sin in Islam. So what he was doing is giving an Islamic view of black magic and the punishment, which didn't go very well with the Ofcom. And they imposed a fine of 200,000 pounds for this particular sentence of Ashfaq Salfi, Sheikh Ashfaq Salfi. The other is, a speaker Imam Qasim from USA and while he was criticizing the homosexuals for that criticism they imposed a fine of 100,000 pounds for his criticism. Let me tell you at the outset, Alhamdulillah, never ever have I been fined anytime anywhere in the world for any of my speeches, Alhamdulillah. But the media gives the impression as though you know okay now he's been fined etc etc and let me give you the background that Peace TV started uh, internationally all over the world in January 2006 and officially on the B Sky B in UK we went on air on the B Sky B in 2007 and within the couple of years it became the most popular Islamic satellite TV in UK so much so that the head of the counterterrorism department Charles Farr he sent a person and he approached me and he said that can you help us to reach those Muslims who we cannot reach because you are very popular, you are the most popular uh, Muslim speaker in UK and your reach is very high. So can you help us? And I told them yes, I know that there are some misunderstandings about Islam in the UK government and I'm also aware that there is a misunderstanding amongst the Muslims also. And I told him I'm willing to help you as long as you do not ask me to do anything against the Quran and the Sunnah number one and number two I don't want your money that was in 2009 but later on next year maybe after a few months the government changed and the labor lost and the conservative came to power in 2010 and the moment they came to power at that time the home secretary was Theresa May who later on became the prime minister and now she had to resign she went out of the way to show that she was very strict and she asked that who is the most famous speaker, Muslim speaker in UK and my name propped up, okay, fine, we have to prevent him, we have to stop him, we have to extradite him and you know, uh, exclude him and so on and so forth. So she made every effort and I was supposed to give a lot, a series of lectures in UK and she prevented me from coming in and that's the story. So what we come to know here that the people in the government servant was the same. Charles Farr, the head of the uh, anti-terrorism M5, he objected saying, how can you prevent Dr. Zakir from coming? He doesn't promote terrorism, but no. So it is what we realized more of a political move. 
it wasn't because I was promoting terrorism. Then they started picking on my lectures and getting my, my, my sentence out of context. And they prevented me from coming. We did a case against them. We won in the lower court. But when we went to the, to the court of appeal, you know, to fight with the government is difficult to win. However much honest they will be, it's difficult. After that, since 2010, they have been trying the level best to stop Peace TV and they have not left any stone unturned, the UK government. But Alhamdulillah, because there is an option where we can go to the court. So we have been fighting cases with them and Alhamdulillah, for the past 10 years, since the time they have been trying to stop us, we have continuing broadcasting, mashallah. And till lately, mashallah, we were broadcasting for about 13 years. Three years very smoothly. After three years, they have been after us, and Alhamdulillah, we have been conveying the message. Though UK, the viewership is, according to me, approximately one percent of our world viewership. Maybe one and a half, two percent, not more than that. Our total global viewership of Peace TV, as estimated in 2016, was 200 million. In UK, maybe three million, four million, so maybe two percent. That's it, not more than that. So, in terms of volume, it is a very small to but we want to continue because it's a Western country, UK has its advantages, has its name, so we want to continue and we did continue, mashallah. But in the last 10 years, they have been picking up on various of my speeches and trying to prove it is illegal, it's not correct, but alhamdulillah, so far they have not been able to put a single fine on any of my speeches. We have used lawyers, we replied to them, but they were successful a few years earlier to take objection on one of the statement of Dr. Isra Ahmed. And may Allah grant him Jannah, Rehmullah, he is a very great guy, mashallah. And they took objection on speech. And after that, they have been harassing us, but we have been continuing as a person we have to clarify our stand and lately about maybe one and a half year back or maybe two years they took objection on five in one day and these objections are not taken by the viewers previously in the first three years maybe once in a year we had objection by viewer we used to reply and there was no problem at all but lately they have been monitoring our channel and trying their best to pick out something which is according to them is against law so about two years back, they picked up five of the speeches, part of the speeches objecting, out of which these two speeches they have put fine on. That was not immediately. They gave us the, and it wasn't a remark made by any viewer. It is by the authority themselves they are monitoring. And one day they picked up five and they asked us and we replied. And out of these five or six, what they objected to, two, just a couple of weeks earlier, after about maybe one and a half, two years, they finally imposed a fine. The, and the highest fine they can impose is 250,000 pounds, which they have not done to any channel in the past. So initially on the Urdu speech of Sheikh Ashfaq Salfi, of Sheikh Ashfaq Salfi, they imposed a fine of 250,000 pounds and wrote a letter, then they reduced it to 200,000 pounds. Let me tell you the background. That because we were being harassed so much and our time was being wasted, our money was being wasted, we got legal advice from our lawyers that if we, instead of being on the Ofcom, we have a license for the Ofcom, two licenses, Peace TV English and Peace TV Urdu. If we give this license up and come through the Spanish license, the Ofcom regulatory, the Ofcom regulatory will not be able to harass you. So we applied for the Spanish license, we got the Spanish license. And then after that, we voluntarily gave in November, mid-November 2019, about six months ago, we voluntarily gave up both the license of the Ofcom for the Sky B, Peace TV English and Peace TV Urdu because we already received the license of Peace TV Chinese, for, for, sorry, for, for, for the Peace TV English and Peace TV Urdu from the Spanish companies. Now, because they're keeping a tap on us, they came to know that we have applied for Peace TV English and Urdu to Spanish companies. They used the contacts and within a couple of weeks, they were able to take away our license. They could not take away our license of the UK because we were always fighting them in the court. But I, we did not know that they could request the Spanish country to, the, to Spanish government and lead allegations against us. So Spanish license was cancelled. So we were 
absolutely kept we were in the dark so we voluntarily gave our license up after we voluntarily gave the license up then later on they imposed the fine on us and but naturally when we when we voluntarily gave up our license and we want to liquidate our company so where is the question of anyone imposing a fine on a person who already given up the license they can not that they cannot but because we gave up the license after several days now they are imposing fine on the query which was raised more than 2 years back knowing very well that now we will not be fighting why should we fight because the company is closed and we already given the company for liquidation because there is no activity in that company which holds the license and they put the highest fine 250000 pound which has never been put to any channel in the history of uk then when we gave a letter they reduced it to 200000 pounds and never before has they even put a fine of 200000 pounds on any of the channels in the past so they are going out of their way to try and take out some fault in us and now after we have given up the license they impose the fine and they and they publicized it and the media you know because well, dr zakir naik is there it is hot topic it is it is good for the trp so most of the media in different parts of the world including india and malaysia they picked it up and they highlighting as though you know dr zakir naik said something and now he is fine no i did not say the fine is not because of me and even these people who said they were presenting the islamic view according to me i feel the view that was presented by sheikh ashfaq salfi regarding the third major sign magic in islam is haram is correct and i have decided today morning and i have told my team to contact the legal team and now inshallah we will challenge the fine of the uk government in the uk court we'll have a judicial review we'll challenge the fine though it's not on me it's on other speakers if the company is liquidated the company cannot pay so we will not go in in any financial loss even if you don't challenge and that's what they thought but now i've decided inshallah inshallah we will see the legal options of challenging this fine in having a judicial review to see to it that they are not able to unnecessarily take it as a precedent so this was the background when we are in the field of dawa and when you get success there's bound to be hurdles the more successful you are the more hurdle will you find and a dai should strive harder and alhamdulillah summa alhamdulillah it's allah's help allah's blessings allah's mercy that mashallah allah's help is keeping on increasing much more than before and inshallah we'll continue doing a dawa though we have now in the last few months our telecast in in UK has stopped on the B Sky B, but the good news is that since Ramadan started, we have started uh, going even on the social media, and I wasn't aware that the second largest public or third largest from any country it is UK. And on the Facebook it said three and a half percent from UK, with a million people came, three and a half percent, mashallah, thirty-five thousand people watching. It's good numbers, mashallah. so allah has other ways and this is much cheaper so we will continue delivering the message of peace and inshallah continuing telling the world all over the world inshallah more than 200 countries through satellites through our social media through facebook through youtube through instagram will deliver the message of peace so that people know what is the real message of islam and what does this religion of peace want to convey to the world